Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're joining from. Welcome to Data Form Geeks webinar. Today's webinar is on SQL Server Indexing Advanced by Amit Bansal, who is an MCM and MVP and also Microsoft Regional Director. Uh, I'll be your host today. I'm Manohar Puna, and we have Satya Ramesh who will be moderating the webinar today. Before we jump into the presentation, I would like to quickly walk you through a few slides about Data Platform Geeks. Data Platform Geeks, as you already know, is a community initiative by eDomino. Uh, also has uh, other branches like SQL Maestros, which specializes in uh, Data Platform and SQL Server training. They do master classes. Also, people were India for other trainings and also expand ERP, uh, which is one of the fastest growing ERP solutions in India. About data platform geeks, uh, if you are, uh, I assume most of you are already aware about Data Platform Summit, which was started just uh, ran last month in August, uh, exactly a month ago, we started this uh, summit. Uh, this is the fourth edition that we had. And just to get a glimpse of how many people attended this conference, we had about 900 plus attendees and we had speakers from all around the world. They were participants from 15 plus countries. And we had, uh, so if you, if you miss this grand uh, gathering of all the professionals, uh, you should attend this conference. Please do visit the links uh, on the chat window. Go and uh, see some glimpses of the conference. Uh, we have some photos uh, with the conference. Uh, and also, I would like to walk you through the next year's conference. As we just conferenced last year, planning for next year, the Data Platform Summit 2019. This will be a three day regular conference, but also before the three days, there will be three additional days of pre-conference full day trainings. So these are specialized topics and you will learn a lot about a single topic in one day. And there are three days of general learning where you attend different sessions. And will be present at this conference. You can explore more about dps10.com. Please do register so that you get more updates. Uh, I, I would quickly want to introduce you to the Data Platform Geeks core team. Uh, Amit Bansal, who is the founder and president. Myself, I'm Manohar Puna, I'm the vice president. And we have Avanish Panchal, uh, Sandeep Pani, Prince Rastogi, and Surbhi Agarwal, who are regional mentors and also play an important role in uh, running these events all around the globe. The eDominus teams who are uh, the backbone of this community who help us run these events and also organize various other events, which I will be talking about in a couple of slides. Uh, we can see the data platform geeks and the eDominus teams on the stage at the conference. This is, this is just a glimpse of the conference, but you will see you can explore more about the conference uh, at the links we provided earlier or at dps10.com. A special thanks to Microsoft, who has been a great support in uh, running this uh, community. The Data Platform Geeks community, if you are attending the webinar today, you would have already registered at dataplatformgeeks.com. But if you haven't got a chance to explore, please do start today, because there's a lot of content where you can learn about Data Platform end-to-end, -end, the whole spectrum. We have blogs, we have videos, we, we have labs and few magazines. Everything on this site is free. So you get to start learn today for free on dataplatformgeeks.com. Uh, you can also explore uh, other events that are happening regularly. So we do conduct in-person events across different cities in India. We do have webinars like this. Today's webinar is part of the webinar series that are running for this month, the second one for this month. Uh, and also there's a lot of content on the site. And if you are really interested in participating in our events or volunteering for events, please do explore and uh, connect with us at deadplatformgeeks.com. 
if you have any questions or if you want to get involved and try to help others who are asking questions these are the two biggest groups on data platform all around the world the largest sql group on facebook is the sql geeks which is the data platform geeks facebook group this is the largest facebook group for sql server all around the world and we have different questions and different experts who are there on the site so you can still jo you can join with these experts and start explaining uh, or helping others in the community and if you do have any questions you can post on our groups and the other thing about uh, the content that is available for you for free is the webinars that are happening regularly are re recorded and they are hosted on our youtube channel so it's youtube.com slash sql server geeks please do explore that not just the recorded webinars but there are uh, many other technical videos that are recorded and uploaded to our youtube channel and also you can download and install telegram which is similar to whatsapp but has some less restrictions uh, you can uh, connect with us uh, on the mobile app the telegram app just you need you just need to go to data platform geeks.com slash dpg hyphen mobile and you will get more information about how you can connect with us on mobile and without any further ado i would like to uh, hand it over to our speaker today you can ask your questions in the q a panel uh, but please do let the speaker continue and uh, will he will try to answer your questions at the end if there are more questions at the end you can still ask them on our facebook group so over to you amit thank you manohar for this wonderful introduction and uh, welcome everybody for uh, in this uh, next webinar about sql server indexing uh, this is in continuation uh, to the SQL Server indexing, uh, the basics uh, session that was delivered by Satya uh, just uh, two days ago. Before I begin, a quick check uh, with all of you. I hope all of you can hear me. You can, if you can use the chat window and confirm me, if you can hear me, just type in yes and I would know. I hope my voice is clear and I'll just continue speaking. Great. That's good confirmation, so I will begin. Um, so today's uh, one hour session is about uh, SQL Server indexing and I'm trying to cover a few advanced uh, concepts. Manohar has already spoken about eDominers, so I will skip this slide uh, quickly about me. I have been working with SQL Server for a couple of years now. And as Manu pointed out, I am a Microsoft certified master and also an MVP for some time now. Uh, Microsoft has also honored me with regional director status. I work for eDominer and of course um, with SQL Maestros under eDominer and I do a lot of uh, community activities uh, in Data Platform Geeks and SQL Server Geeks. Also uh, along with many others, I am part of the Data Platform Summit organizing team. That's the URL where you can learn more about me. What do we have for today? In today's uh, takeaway for you will be some index tuning examples these are some real world examples of which I have created academic prototypes and I'm going to cover specifically about and and or operator. So I'm just trying to be very clear A and D, which is the and operator and the or operator. So how are indexes important with these operators? I'm going to talk about missing index ambiguity and how you can deal with it. I'm going to explain the concept of lift based subset with a few examples. Then I'm going to talk about indexing for aggregates when you use a particular column in your aggregate function and the sort order of it how you can deal with that and finally i'm going to conclude the session with uh, some concepts around selectivity and optimizer rules this is going to be your takeaway for today and as always all the scripts are going to be shared with you after the webinar is over so i think tomorrow you're going to get an email where you will have the resources and the recording for both the webinars that were delivered this week and uh, in that email you will have the links to download and of course the recorded version of the webinar will be uploaded on youtube no more slides let's jump into demos straight away so i'll switch to the vm Let me pull out the first example. I'm just rearranging the screens a bit. My first example is about uh, and and or operator. Okay, so the two operators. And before I begin the first demo, I want to just set the expectation 
this webinar is being delivered with the assumption that you know the basics of indexes. Um, typically the two contemporary indexes, the clustered index and the non-clustered index. What are the differences between them and uh, the column order and the include keyword, etc. These are some of the basics that you need to know uh, if you really want to have uh, maximum learning from uh, today's session. In case you do not know that, no worries. You can still be part of uh, these demos and you can learn those basics, come back and watch the recording. So I'm using uh, AdventureWorks 2012 as the demo database. And let me drop this table, person2. So I'll create a, a copy of this table called person.person .person as person2. And you know, when you do a select star into and you create a copy, then this new table, person.person2, .person is actually a heap. Uh, which means there are there's no clustered index on top of it and I have not even created a non clustered index So there's no specific order to the data that is contained in the pages for this table I will include actual execution plan now So I click on the toolbar here or press Control M on the keyboard My first query here says select star from person 2 where last name is equal to Duffy now when you look at these examples you will see that these are very relatively very simple examples but i'm just trying to show you a few tricky things here when i include act actual execution plan and i click on execute it's a no brainer and i'm sure all of you will know i am filtering on last name so you will see last name is in the where clause this is one of the columns in person 2 table and when i go into the execution plan you will see that there is a, a table scan happening and rightly so because table scan is the um, um, it is the uh, is the process of scanning all the pages that are there on the table simply because there is no index whatsoever. Now, in order to speed up this query, um, I'm going to create a non-clustered index on last name. This is on line number eleven. I create an index called idx person two last name on person dot person two, uh, and I use my indexing uh, column, which is last name. When I create this and now when I go when I'm going to run this query, I'm sure all of you will know this time the index is going to be used. So when I click on execute here and go into the execution plan, you can clearly see that the index seek operation is happening on that table. There's no more table scan. That's the first thing to be noted. And if I take the tooltip over it and if you look under the object section here, uh, you will see that this particular object that we just created is being used. So we are seeking. That's the important thing to note here. We are seeking. We have an equality operator. We are seeking. And for the remaining columns, there is a lookup, which is the iterator below it, uh, RID lookup for every row that we want to retrieve. Very simple and very straightforward. Now, let's say the query changed a bit, which is in, uh, apart from last name, now I also want first name. So first name equals to Terry. If I execute this query now and I go into the execution plan, you will notice that I get the same plan, which is I just have one index and that one index last name is going to be used. You can verify this from the object. And then for the remaining columns, I am uh, uh, lookup is happening, which means definitely there's nothing really happening with first name here. Uh, this predicate matching is done by the remaining columns that come from the data pages because the last name index does not really have first name. So what I want to do is I, I create another index on first name and I click on execute. Now, this is where things start getting a little tricky. When I now uh, run the select statement with both the predicates in my where clause, which is last name equals to Duffy and first name is equal to query. Um, I have seen many folks would see that both the indexes are going to be used. Last name will also be used and first name index will also be used because both the indexes do exist. But when I click on execute and I go to the execution plan, you will see that only one of the indexes uh, is being used. And if I take the cursor over here, you can again observe that only last name is being used. The same index that has been that the optimizer has been using for a while. The first name index is not being used. So, so this is um, there's a bit of uh, clarification required here. The optimizer does not really think that using two indexes to satisfy the uh, predicate criteria uh, will be cost effective. Uh, scanning uh, seeking on one index because there is an AND operator is more cost effective than really using two indexes. That's an important point to note. 
So what I do is uh, because my index has uh, my query has both last name and first name. I think let's go ahead and create an index which will have both the columns in my index key formation first name as well as last name. So when I create this index and now note the order of the column here. Uh, my select query has last name and then first name, but my index has first name and then last name. Does it really matter? I will answer that in a moment. When I execute this and now I have three indexes, one index on last name, another index on first name, and then I have a third index, which is a combination of first name and last name. Now the question is, will the third index be used? That's the point. So let's execute this. Okay. And we go to the execution plan and let's go and verify and you will see yes the third index is being used so you can actually see oops uh, you can actually see in the object here that the third index is actually being used now what what does this mean the optimizer is again it's a cost based optimizer and it knows that the predicate here is and which means both the criteria needs to be satisfied for a row to match and it just goes to one single index object Earlier, uh, you, it was only going to that one index which only had last name, but now it knows that there's another index which has both the columns. So obviously, it's more cost effective to just go and filter out the matching records from there and get the remaining columns from the base table. So my third index is being used here. And so the question really is, what about those two indexes? Those, uh, those two indexes, I mean, those single column indexes, are they really useful? Yes, they are if I switch to or okay so this is where I want to want all of you to focus on the querying pattern as to what exactly your querying patterns are and indexes are basically designed created strategized based on the querying pattern now when I execute uh, this query with or and you know what or would mean is either of the condition needs to be satisfied which means I need to get all the records uh, for last name is Duffy and all the records for first name equals to Terry and both of them are valid when I click on execute and I go to the execution plan and you will see a completely different plan now and now there are two index seeks happening so let's look at the first one the first one is on last name please note that here and that's the first index seek and the second index seek is on um, first name last name right so that's the second one so let me just quickly highlight that for you first name and last name now it's not important that uh, index why why first name is being first name and last name index is being used and why not first name is being used if this index did not exist SQL server optimizer will actually take the first name index so that's not so important because first name is the first column uh, in the uh, in this multi column index we can very well seek on first name now two indexes are being used both the records are being concatenated here, which is in the um, next portion of the execution plan. Concatenation is basically something like unioning the output from one seek and the second seek, joining them together. But then, as you know, it's an OR operator. So there are chances of duplicate records which get filtered by a distinct sort operator here in the third uh, phase. And then the remaining columns are being um, uh, fetched out for, with this RID lookup and they are being joined. Uh, here and then the output is sent back to the client using the select operator So this was a very very uh, quick example uh, just to set the basics out on the querying pattern uh, indexing for and and or and how SQL Server Optimizer placed differently and there's a lot of learning here trying uh, creating different types of indexes and seeing how the optimizer actually utilizes them so friends, uh, please use the chat window once again and just give me a quick hint if this example was clear to you. At least you got the basic sense of what I was trying to demonstrate. You can type yes and if suppose the example was not clear, you can say no also, which is fine. Not that I will be able to repeat the entire demo again, but I would just get a sense if the uh, demo was going well. Cool. Thank you so much. I get a lot of positive feedback from all of you. And now I can see a lot of questions are coming in, which is great. So please hold on to your questions till the end. I know all the examples by heart. So I am going to take up your question and I'm going to answer it. So please hold on because there are a lot of demos and I just want to make sure that I complete all my demos.
now let's go to the next example for the uh, purpose of next example i am actually using a dummy database called lob the lob stands for large object so what i've done is before the demo i have created a database with a few tables oh, sorry before the webinar began i just created a database with a few tables that have a few uh, million records i just wanted to save that much time and i'm trying to play around with a few things so let me first drop all these indexes if at all they exist okay let me use lob first and then i will drop all the indexes okay great which means these indexes don't exist now while the first example was a very simple demonstration about how the index in the index choices keep changing depending on the operator that you're using and the column there was one question that probably all of you will have in your mind the order of columns in the select list and the order of columns of the indexes does it really matter my answer to that is the order of columns in your select query in your query does not matter but the order of columns in the indexes do matter please always keep that in mind so in the query whether i put first name first or last name last or reverse it in the select query no problem at all it does not matter but in the index formation if i put first name comma last name it is not the same as last name comma first name okay so keep that in mind there will be one or uh, two more examples that will prove that point to you now let's move with this example now missing index feature now missing index feature is something that is very popular all of you know it and what is the basic idea behind missing index feature you run a query and uh, suppose it's not running slow and you go to the execution plan of sql server management studio you see a missing index hint and then you go to that hint and you try to create those indexes and you see there is performance improvement uh, yes that's the basic premise um, but i'm trying to show you something more than that so i'm going to use lob as the example first i want to show you that there is a table called tbl orders and when i run sp uh, help index and sp help stats um, there are some statistics but you can see that there is absolutely there are no indexes and these are the indexes that we are going to create as i move forward so here is a query um, i will turn on actual execution plan and or press control m so in the first query uh, friends please observe i am trying to join a couple of tables orders customers and employees and uh, here is here are my joining keys customer id is one of my joining keys employee id is another joining key and then at the end there is a filter on order id which is a column in tbl orders and this criteria is greater than 1 and less than 1000 and i just have another version of the query which is exactly the same only difference is the parameter value here it says greater than 1 and less than a million okay so that's the a small difference between the two queries so when i run the first one and i have turned on actual execution plan let's click on execute you will see that i got 998 rows less than 1000 rows and it came out very quickly less than a second and when i go to the execution plan here and the first thing you will notice that we are doing a table scan uh, obviously because there are no indexes so i'm scanning the entire table and as expected management studio recommends me to create an index so there is a missing index hint here i will right click and go click on missing index details and when i look at this missing index details um you will at somewhere show that the query performance can improve by 61% or something um most importantly what you should be noticing here is that it's actually recommending you to create an index on order id and then it tells you to include all these columns in this particular index so what's going on first thing that you need to understand that missing index hint uh, this feature will always recommend you to create a covering index now it's up to you to really decide do you really want a covering index all the time when you um, think about creating a covering index something like this just look at the list of columns that it it suggests you to put in the index itself which means 
uh, this is going to be a pretty big index where you are getting customer ID, employee ID, shipper ID, order date, filler, all these columns as part of the index, which means uh, a copy of the original data is going to be created as part of this non-clustered index. And you will have all these columns, uh, which means their values, that data at the leaf node. Uh, the indexing key, however, is order ID. So my first warning to you, you here is don't always think about creating covering indexes because they become pretty large objects. And every time you are inserting or updating data, all these non-clustered indexes have to be touched uh, whenever you are updating uh, any columns that are part of the index or when you're inserting new rows. So please be careful with that. Uh, nonetheless, this is one of the index that it is suggesting. I'll go back and uh, run the second version of this query. The second version, as you know, the, the only change here is this parameter. Instead of 1000, I take a million. And when I execute this, this will take a little more time than the first one, just because I'm trying to get a lot of data onto the client. I'm hoping that this will finish off in less than 10 or 11 seconds. So this is the first time we are executing this. So without the index, it takes about 18 seconds. Wow, that's quite a lot. And let's go into the execution plan and you again see a, a table scan happening. And again, you are seeing that there is a recommendation on index. Let's go and look at the index uh, hint. And is this hint the same as before? Yes, it is. You again have hint on order ID and SQL Server tells you to include all these columns. So let's go and do that. Let me close these windows. And friends, here is the index that SQL Server was suggesting, which is I'm going to create this index in IDX table orders order ID. I'm just following a naming convention here on order ID and all the columns. Let's go ahead and create this index as recommended by SQL. It just takes a few seconds and the index is ready. Let's go back and run the query and see what's going on. When I execute this now, the first query, and when I go to the execution plan, of course, the output came very quickly. And when I look into the execution plan, you can see that now the there's a seeking happening. There's no table scan. You are seeking and you can see the object that is being used. This is the object that we created, right? IDX TB, TBL orders order ID clearly being used. Uh, this was the index that you had created and looks all well and there is no more hints. All good. When I go and execute the second query where, you know, I have tweaked the second parameter value to a million and we execute this uh, because this is a lot of data that we are returning back on the client. This might take uh, uh, some more time. Let's see how much time it takes. 10 seconds, 11, 12, 13. Okay. Takes about 18 seconds again. And when I go into the execution plan, it does seek, which is the good thing that your object is being used. And you can clearly see that uh, this, this is the one that we created, order ID, it's being used. But something very surprising, you are also getting another hint now. This time you're getting a hint, another hint to create, the, uh, create another index. What is this index now? So if I right click and uh, click on missing index details, it tells me to create another index on customer ID and order ID. Now, this is where things get a bit confusing. Let me quickly summarize if you're confused. First time when I ran the, both the queries, they were only recommending me first uh, index, the one index on order ID. Now, when I create that and I run the first query, it all goes well. But when I run the second query, which is returning me a larger data set, uh, it is using the index that we created first but then it is also recommending another index. And now the surprising factor is that it just takes up customer ID from the include and tells me to uh, put it in the index key formation. Now this looks to me, looks very weird because you already have a index with the same set of columns and it's recommending you to create another index with just a different combination, uh, but the same set of columns. So this is uh, to me, uh, not really acceptable. You know, you, I'm, I'm just being asked to create another duplicate index. But uh, uh, just complaining here is not enough. Instead of complaining about the SQL optimizer, which does a good job most of the time, uh, let's go and dive a little more deep into what's going on. So what I will do is friends, first let's verify 
was SQL Server always recommending you that first uh, one index only when you ran the query for the first time without any indexes? So what I will do is I will actually go and drop this index that we have created. Click on execute. I have dropped. I just want to verify. Do I have any index right now on TBL orders? No, I don't have any index. And when I run this query with less than a million records and I execute it and of course uh, wait for 15 seconds please before we get the output and what I want to show you friends is probably many of you do not know but two indexes were recommended when we ran this query for the first time and that's where uh, we will get into the properties of the feature um, so if I go to the execution plan it's recommending me this index. So what you did and what we all did was we just right clicked and we went to missing index details and we uh, saw that this was the first index that was being recommended. But if you go back to the query, actually it is recommending you another index which is not shown here and you click on select, right click, go to properties of the select operator. And if you expand the missing index hint um, um, in this properties window, and you can see there is index one and there is index two. There are two indexes. If I expand index one, if I expand index one and I go to the missing index, this is 37% impact, which you can see here. This is the first one. If I go to the column group, there are two column groups, one and two. The first column is inequality. And which one is it recommending me? The order ID. This is the first one. But it also recommended me a second index, which is here under two if I expand to if I expand missing index and I again expand column group and I expand column one equality which column is that well that's employee ID that's not even customer ID remember that was the third index that was being recommended and I go to column two which is inequality and this is going to be order ID so if I expand here is order ID what's going on what's going on is that Actually, the optimizer here, the SQL Server here, engine has recommended two index, the first one and the second one. And most important thing to be noted, that second one has an impact of 74% of performance improvement and the first one has an impact of 37%. What is SQL Server trying to tell you that you better go ahead and create the second index, not the first index to satisfy this particular query that is the point you all need to note oh i sorry i collapsed everything but yeah you understood that when you which means when index hint you know this index recommendation comes from management studio just don't go and look at this one also go into the properties window to find out if multiple re recommendations are being made and this is a very classic example where i'm actually showing you multiple recommendations where the second recommendation is better than the first one that's the point now with this I am and 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 in case you observed um, there was another index that was being recommended after I created the first index that was on customer ID column uh, comma uh, order ID let's not go into that territory that's more confusion uh, better to be very clean and I was playing around with this here so I will go ahead and create the first index which is this okay and I will go ahead and create the second index, which is which has more impact. Okay. And this is my second index, index number two. So just note down this is two IDX and this is one IDX. Now let's go and look at performance differences. Let's close the property window. Okay, so this is our first one. Now, when I run this first query and First thing we want to see now is we have two indexes. I want to just show this to you by SP help index that there are these two indexes and the summary is one is on order ID. The other one is on employee ID and order ID and of course rest of the columns in the included keyword. So they're still covering indexes. Now let's do some performance comparison. When I execute this first query, which is only getting me few records and I go to the execution plan, which index is being used you will observe that order ID index, the first one, one underscore is being used, rightly so, okay? Because the first index works better for this one. But I also created the second index. If I actually force the use of second index, what's the performance difference? Because for 
the same query with different parameter values, you don't want to have multiple indexes to satisfy them. That's like too costly to have more than one index to satisfy same ver different versions of the same query with different parameter values. So I want to see if I delete the first index, what is what is going to be the performance impact if the SQL Server has to always use the second index for the first query. When I run this, oops, sorry. Uh, this actually is not correct. So this is going to be employee ID underscore order ID. Okay. So when I do this and do this again and execute and when I run both of them and I look into the performance difference. So there is quite a bit of performance difference between the second one and the uh, uh, the first one and the second index. So you can see 20% to 80%. But the execution time for both of them is pretty less, which is less than a second. But which index is being used by the uh, the query, which is getting the larger data set? So if I execute this one, and of course it's going to take another 12 to 15 seconds. So just let's wait while we get this data out. Okay, executed and I go into the execution plan and I will look into the um, index scan that is happening here. Uh, and you will see that SQL Server is actually now here in this particular case is using the second index. So the second index is uh, definitely better than the first index for the second query. So. Um, this, this friends, other things to be noted in this example, but it's kind of a little too complicated to explain it over the web, over a webinar, but uh, there is a difference between seeking and scanning here, which you need to uh, observe, but I'll cover that with another demo. But what I'm trying uh, right now trying to show uh, to you is that I'm just seeing what happened. Okay, so uh, what I'm trying to show you is that the second index is definitely better for the second query, but uh, how does the performance play out if I actually force um, the first index between the uh, between the two queries? So what I can simply do is just put the comparison with the first one, IDXTBL order, and this was order ID. So if I'm forcing between the two, which one is performing better? So let's go and execute that. Okay, and we'll just wait for a few seconds. This is going to take about 30 seconds now because I'm running two queries and what I'm trying to do just uh, as a quick summary for all of you. This one is being compared with this one. In the first one, the optimizer will choose the index that it wants. And in the second one, I'm forcing the use of the first index where I want to see which one is performing better and which index I should actually keep uh, and which one should I delete. Overall execution should just be over in a second or two. Done. Let's go and look into the execution plan. And you can actually see that there is hardly any performance difference. It's just 48% or 52%. You know, so that's the difference. Which means, friends, what's the conclusion? The conclusion is that between these two indexes for the second query, I have marginal performance difference, right? Uh, of course, the second one works better. But then when I compared these two, the first one with the second one, and if I compared them and when I execute this, and this is the point I want to make to you is 20% versus 80%. This is quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to stick with the first index that is created, not the second one. So I will stick to this index, which works pretty good for both. And I'm going to drop this second index. Now remember, this is the mistake which uh, many developers DBAs do is they will actually create this second index. Now remember, I tried multiple permutations combination. I also swapped the order of columns, order ID into employee ID. This one actually works better, which is the third one works better than this one, the second one. But it's not important for me to show that to you. Uh, you could just drop this one and you are good to go. What is the summary of this demo? The summary of this demo is 
multiple recommendations can be made simultaneously. So go and look into the properties window and do not blindly follow those recommendations. Please evaluate them. If you have enough time and you have the environment and the data, which means real production like data, just don't test with small tables or empty tables test with big large tables the way I'm doing it here run uh, create multiple indexes run them uh, parallelly you know together as a batch and see which one is performing better than the other and try to understand understand the reasoning behind it that's the summary from uh, this uh, demo and of course don't follow missing index feature blindly because it will always recommend you covering indexes it can even recommend you exact duplicate indexes uh, which which already exist so you got to be a bit careful with this I'll close this one and I understand this was a little more uh, complicated but I hope you have understood it can I have some feedback from you was the second demo clear to you too many things, too many indexes running around comparing. So I understand it might just go a little over the top, but yeah. Did you get the key crux of what I was trying to do? Good. That's, that's a lot of positive feedback. Yes, questions, please hold on. Um, you can use the Q&A panel and type in your questions. I will answer them the moment I'm done with all the demos. Now, this third demo is about the left-based subset. And uh, this is very quick and very simply only concept that I want to explain you is the order of columns in an index is very important. And um, let's see that with a quick example. I'm using AdventureWorks 2012 here. Um, make a copy. Okay, there is a table already exists. So drop table person copy. So I'll just me just drop it. Okay. And I will create the table again. So I'm creating a copy again. And just to show you that no indexes or stats exist on this table. And here are three queries that I, I want to execute, you know. So the first query has first name, middle name, last name, email promotion um, from person.copy from this table and look at the predicate first name and last name. Second query is getting a few different other columns and the predicate is on email promotion and person type. So the now what I want you to observe here are my two columns, two unique columns. And then here again, there are two unique columns, email promotion and person type. Now there is a third query, which is again getting a few columns from the select list. And then now again, I have a few columns in my where clause, person type, first name, last name. But person type, first name, last name has been used in the first and the second query. So there is no unique column here. Now I have to design an index which can suit query one, query two and query three. So what are the various options? Uh, I'm just going to go over this very quickly. Um, uh, because I don't have this opportunity to really do a survey. When I go around and ask people, what would you like to do? Uh, I get a lot of responses. This is, these are common responses, which is you create an index on first name, last name, person type, and email promotion. This is a pretty wide index, an index on three, on four columns. And all of them are in the index keyword. You know why this is getting recommended because all of them are using equality operator. And there is a possibility to uh, basically seek on all these uh, columns. There's another option. You could put email promotion, first name, last name, and person type, which is just changing the order of the columns to suit the better usage of indexes for some of these queries. So what happens is when you use the uh, first index, let's say I create this index, first name, last name, person type, and email promotion. And then I create the second index also, which is email promotion, first name, uh, last name and person type all the four columns, but the orders are different. So both the indexes are there now and let's go and run and execute the query and see how it works and include actual execution column. So the first has first name and last name. Now, if you go and look at both these indexes, I should actually use a second window here to basically just for you to compare. Let me paste this date copy here. And I will keep the index 
definition open here. These were the two indexes that we had created. And let me vertical tab. Okay, I think this will be easy now. So these friends, these are the two indexes that we created. And uh, let's go and look at the queries now. So if you look at the first query, you want to seek on first name and last name. But unfortunately, uh, no, it's not actually unfortunately, fortunately, you have an index on first name and last name, right? And first name and last name are there as the first two columns. Remember, I told you that the order of columns in your select query does not really matter, but it matters in the uh, in the index uh, definition. So when I execute this first query and I've turned on actual execution plan, if I execute the query and I go into the execution, you can actually that see that there is seeking happening and the object first index index one is being used here. Look at this object portion and here are your seek predicates. And if you notice there is first name and then there is last name in the seek predicate. So you are able to seek all good. Um, now, if you go to the second one, the second query, you have uh, email promotion and person type. Now, this is interesting. When you execute this query, and I'm sure all of you can make this out, the second index is going to be used because the second index has email promotion as the first column. So you can seek on email promotion. But can you seek on person type, which is the second column, and also uses equality operator? So if I execute this and go into the execution, you can see, yes, you are seeking. But here is the important learning for you. You can you are able to seek on email promotion. You can see in the seek predicate, but you are not able to seek on person type. And this portion is called as residual predicate, where a residual predicate is uh, your uh, column on which you are not able to seek, or the predicate on which you are not able to seek. You're just getting that output uh, as a virtue of the byproduct of scan. So uh, this is an important learning. Person type is the fourth column here. And because you're not able, you're not seeking on first name and last name, you cannot seek on subsequent column. This is what I mean by left based subset. So indexes follow a left based subset mechanism. If you're not seeking on the first column, you cannot seek on the second column. If you're not seeking on the second, you cannot seek on the third. And if you're not seeking on third, you cannot seek on the fourth column. This is how the order of columns in an index is so very critical. So partially your index is being used here in query two, but not fully. What about query three? In query three, you put person type as the uh, as the first uh, for okay person type, first name and last name. And again, same thing is going to happen. If I execute this, you will see that first index is going to be used, and there is no uh, residual predicate here. Why? You can see all the columns are part of your seek predicate here. Uh, and why so? Because Because you have first name, last name, and person type as the three columns, first, second, and third. And they are exactly the three columns that are there in your select list. So you definitely have uh, two indexes which are doing a good job, but not necessarily the best job. Why I say this is because these indexes, friends, are pretty wide. Just to improve a query performance, you created covering indexes with all the four columns in both the indexes. That's not really the best job. What could you do? You could suggest uh, an index, something like this, where you have the first index with three columns and then you have the second index with only two columns. This is a little more optimized version of the first two. So let me show you how we can deal with this. Let me first drop this first index and let me drop this second index. And then let's create IDX index one. And then I'm going to create IDX index two, and let's keep it open here on the left hand side. And then I am going to run the queries again. Let's start now the first query, which where you have first name and last name. And I think all of you know the answer. First index can be used easily, right? No brainer. You click on execute, you go to the execution plan and you go to the index seek no residual predicate. And you can clearly see that both the columns are being used in the in the seek predicate. Okay. Now, Pretty straightforward. Look at the second query. Second query wants email promotion and person type. Where will it go? It will directly go to index two, which is satisfying query two. So if I execute this, this is going to use the second index. No residual predicate. Pretty good. Both the indexes are part of your seek predicate, right? Let's go to query three. Query three wants person type, first name, and last name. 
again order of column is different but you can easily use index one and execute this and hopefully you will see that there is no residual predicate because all the columns are there part of the first index definition the only thing is the order is different but as you know the order in the select list does not matter all of them are there in the seek predicate no residual predicate so this is uh, an example of left based subset and how you can create more optimized versions of the query uh, of the indexes um, looking at the querying pattern never create an index for a given single query try to create indexes that can at least help um, um, multiple queries or maximum queries that's the message from this third demo So friends, uh, a quick check. Was this third demo clear? The messaging, the, the idea behind what I was trying to do? Yeah, you can actually use the chat window and put yes. And then I will jump to the fourth demo now where I'm going to show you the usage of indexes for aggregates and this is very very simple and straightforward this is not really advanced also but i still thought i should cover this uh, for the for the sake of completeness so i will use adventure works and then there is a table here called sales order header and if i use sp help index you will see the couple of indexes here on row id sales order number customer id sales person id etc um, which is my clustered so this sales order id is actually the clustered index and there are non clustered indexes on the other columns salesperson id customer row id and uh, sales order number now this is a query ignore option max dot one that's not important but you are trying to get customer id and then you are using an aggregate call sum on subtotal now note that there is no index on subtotal and this is what you want to do so let me include actual execution plan and if i execute this and go into the execution and you can see that uh, there is a clustered index scan obviously because there is no non clustered index on uh, subtotal and there is nothing on customer id i would just run this again for you to show that there is uh, oh there is a non clustered index on customer id you want customer id but there is nothing on subtotal so when i run this let me go to the execution plan what is being used this is a clustered index scan of the main object because there is nothing on subtotal um now you know if i ask you what index would you need you would e very easily say let's go ahead and create a non clustered index on subtotal that's a very common response that i get but let me tweak the query a bit now um, i definitely have the same version of the query i want customer id and i want to do a to sum of the subtotal column but this time i want to do a group by on customer id and i also want to um, uh, uh, sorry I, I want to do an order by on customer id which means i want to sort the data my customer id which is same on the select column list if i run this and execute and i look into the execution plan you will see that sql does a hash match which this is for the aggregate sum function and i'm doing a clustered index scan and then there is a sort operator now the problem with this uh, query is not really a problem but if this was running very slow and i look into the execution plan i will definitely see that uh, sort operator is not uh, something that I would uh, prefer to have uh, because this is eating about 50% of my uh, plan uh, cost and I have to go and create an index. So uh, let me ask you now, given that you have this query, you have to create a non clustered index. Can you use the chat window and tell me what non clustered index, which non clustered index should I create? Which columns should be there? one column or two columns or three columns and what should be the order of the columns please use the chat window to answer just tell me the columns and the order of those columns that's all so you can put column one comma column two in the chat window and i know it's a non-clustered index so that's fine we already have a clustered index quick question for you think about this query and see for yourself decide which non-clustered index should you create to satisfy the performance of this query you need to create a non clustered index yes i am getting some responses customer id comma subtotal some of you are saying subtotal comma customer id some of you are saying include customer id include subtotal right vinod says customer id uh, create a uh, index on customer id and include subtotal most responses are so i'll just do uh, 
yeah let let a few more responses come in i'll wait for a few more seconds if you want to suggest something more i am quickly observing all the responses that are coming in while you suggest more responses i'll have a glass of water okay i've got i've got a lot of responses and i'll tell you the most common response has been uh, a, a a combination of customer id comma subtotal and subtotal comma customer id but some of you have also responded with creating an index on customer id and include subtotal so yes that is the correct answer you know creating a composite column on customer id and subtotal is not required because you are not seeking on subtotal you just need subtotal values for the purpose of aggregation so you can have subtotal in the leaf level you don't need that column in root page and intermediate page uh, so you can just put subtotal and include and because you want the data to be sorted by customer id and when you create an index and you put a column in the index definition the data is ordered by that particular column which means this was some recommendation some of you recommended this one subtotal comma customer id some of you recommended this one customer id comma subtotal this is good uh, the first one is definitely not good but this is fine but better the best is obviously um where is this this one covering three which is uh, creating a ton customer id and subtotal this is the right answer just to prove the point let's go ahead and create all the three indexes and see which one the optimizer chooses so let's go and create the first one subtotal comma customer id then let's go and create customer id comma subtotal and then let's go and create um the third one which is customer id include subtotal this is covering three take a note of this so we have three indexes covering three then you have um covering two and then you have covering one and now when i run the query and i include actual execution plan let's see which one will the optimizer use and if you go optimizer is rightly using covering 3 that's what you want to see so that's the correct answer remember what happens is when you take a particular uh, column in your index key definition that column is available in the root page and all the intermediate pages all the way up to leaf level because you have to seek and for seeking you have to traverse from root to every level below it but when you put a column in leaf level which is the purpose of include it is only available for the purpose of covering only for the purpose of retrieval you don't want to seek on it so that is was a very simple quick example of how you should think about indexing for aggregates now friends i have my last demo here but i am running out of time i don't think so i will be able to cover it and i promise i will create Uh, we will have another webinar where we can do this fourth one multi column indexing or ring selectivity uh, this is a long demo so it might take about 20 to 25 minutes and i will do it again uh, and if you are in hyderabad or bangalore there are two events happening one on september 22nd at microsoft gachibuli campus in hyderabad uh, i will be doing this indexing session there and along with the advanced demo of multi column and then there is a event happening in bangalore the new office of microsoft in bilandur uh, funds galaxy prestige funds galaxy that is on september 29th uh, so if you are in bangalore come and join us there so i would i'm just skipping this last fifth uh, demonstration and i have covered the first four so let me go back with uh, to the slides and Yes I'm going to answer questions that you have please use the Q&A panel to put down your uh, questions and I will just complete the remaining few slides and then hand over to Manohar to uh, close the webinar and then I will answer questions so if you uh, are watching and you suddenly see SQL Maestro's around here because all of these advanced demos and everything is part of uh, SQL Maestro's master classes uh, you can actually go and learn more about SQL Maestro's from this website the twitter handles are there 
I am available on a underscore Bansal. That's my Twitter handle. And yeah, please do um, go to the YouTube uh, channel of SQL Maestros. There are a lot of small videos there related to uh, performance uh, tuning. Um, yeah, uh, some few more links. We have a hands-on labs also that you can uh, subscribe to. It's free. Some labs are free. Uh, Manohar has already spoken about Data Platform Geek, so I will skip this slide. So thank you very much for your time today. Uh, and uh, yeah, follow me on A underscore Bansal. It was a pleasure delivering this one hour session for you. Hope to connect with you sometime soon in an in-person event or next webinar. If you have questions, please stay over, uh, handing it over back to Manohar to close the session. And then I'll take back the control for questions. Over to you, Manohar. Thank you, Amit. I'm just sharing my screen. Uh, hopefully you can see it. Uh, just type in yes on the chat window if you're able to see my screen. All right. Thank you. Um, so if you do uh, have any questions, I hope you are posting your questions on Q&A panel, but you can actually, uh, if, if uh, Amit is not able to answer all the questions, you can actually post uh, additional questions, not just to this topic, but uh, anything else. Also on the Facebook group, our LinkedIn group, and also join our mobile, um, mobile app on Telegram. Uh, a quick word from our sponsors. Um, of course, SQL Mistros, which is uh, <clears throat> uh, sponsoring the webinars. Or oh, they have uh, uh, Amit has already mentioned about the master classes, their advanced trainings. Uh, but there are also a lot of things that you can learn on your own once you register on the site. Uh, there are paid offerings of few of them, so please do visit and explore the hands on labs. There are a lot of on site trainings that are available, master classes that happen. So please do explore them. Um, and I would quickly like to talk about few of the online master classes that are happening uh, with SQL Mestros. Uh, there are a lot of, if you can see the screen now, you see most of the world renowned experts on there uh, delivering uh, uh, training sessions, uh, which is a full day training, but eight hours full day training, but given delivered like two half a day trainings. So you can actually make out half two half a day trainings and finish the eight hours training with these experts. They are uh, full day trainings on uh, bot and cognitive services, uh, indexes, DevOps, Power BI, integration services. And you can see the experts here. Uh, they are Steph Locke, uh, Dr. Greg Lowe, Hamish Watson, Peter Myers, Andy Leonard, Amit Bansal himself, and Warwick Rudd and Satya. So please do visit sqlmaestros.com. You can also contact them directly if you have any more questions on the uh, contact numbers displayed on the screen here. Uh, they are also posted on the chat window, so please feel free to explore them. The hands-on labs that I was talking about, there are a lot of hands-on labs, so it's better to learn by doing it yourself. So hands-on labs is a very good resource to do that. Uh, please do explore because there are a lot of paid hands-on labs available that will help you in learning advanced um, uh, advanced training courses. So thank you for your time today, taking out your time and attending the webinar today. So please do uh, stay online and uh, Amit will answer any questions that you have. Once again, I just want to repeat, please do register to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter at SQL Server Geeks, uh, and you are already a member of Data Platform Geeks.com. Plus, uh, so please do start exploring the content on the site. Thank you, everyone, and over to you, Amit.